What's going on YouTube? GSNO right here. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about the Corellium, which is a very, very important thing for the future of jailbreaking. And I'm going to tell you that this is a real game changer in the way jailbreaks are going to be developed on the iOS. So the Corellium, this is actually a virtual device provider or a virtual device system where you can create iPhones and iPads and iPod touches running arbitrary iOS versions online and these are virtual devices that are running iOS so that you can test anything you want on them without sacrificing a real device. So why is this important for the jailbreak community? Well, this helps a lot the developers of jailbreaks because you no longer need to have a stash of devices in order to test your jailbreak or in order to test something that might be potentially dangerous and you no longer risk your device device if you want to test something that has the potential to bootloop your device. For example, I don't know, you're working on a new substrate or you're working on a new whatever and you are afraid to test it on your only physical device because if it doesn't work, it has the potential to bootloop it and it will force you to update to a version that is not vulnerable to your jailbreak. So what do you do? You go Corellium. The Corellium platform allows you to create virtual devices that run real iOS so that you can test absolutely anything you want on them without risking to break anything because you know if you break one of these you can just remove it from your account and create a new one it only takes 10 minutes so this will help a lot the jailbreak development but before we get into that I would like to tell you that this is not a sponsored video I'm not being paid to present this to you I'm not being paid to talk about this I'm just talking about it because it's a real game changer and is the first of its kind in the iOS community. So for the moment, this is only available by invitation, but I have access for a video, so I'm going to show you exactly how it looks like. So you can see here, this is how the account looks like once you got one. You can create any device you want and of course when you create a new device you're able to select the project and then after the project you're able to pretty much select which kind of device you're going to get so I'm going to press in here select and you can see that I have a variety of devices I can choose between so jailbreakers can no longer say well I would support the iPhone 10 but I don't have one and I don't have anybody who can test it for me. Nope, they can go ahead in here and select iPhone 10 and make one. So then after you select a device, let's say the iPod Touch in here, I can press select and it will ask me which iOS version. So I can go ahead and choose any version without it being signed in this range in here, starting from the iOS 10.3, going all the way up to iOS 12. Of course, a fresh install takes somewhere around 10 minutes, just like the real thing and this is real iOS and one important thing you need to keep in mind is that you can actually have it jailbroken or non-jailbroken so I can pretty much have iOS 12 jailbroken right now on this Corellium device so I can test all my tweaks I can test all my stuff to ensure that once a real jailbreak for the general public is out all my tweaks and all my stuff is already tested ahead of time. Imagine how good is that? It will eliminate a lot of pain and once a jailbreak is released, most of the tweaks can be utilized. So this is very good. And once you select that, you get to fiddle with the boot options, something that you wouldn't be able to do in a million years on a real iOS device because you would need an iBoot exploit or a bootroom exploit for that. Of course, this is due to Apple security. However, in here, I'm able to configure all the boot arguments for the kernel to enable debugging, to enable any other stuff. I can even pass the um, AMFI get out of my way so that AMFI doesn't buffer with me. Then I can load arbitrary kernels in here you know for testing and other stuff I can uh, add hashes to the trust cache of AMFI to trust my binaries that are not signed by Apple which is quite good you know some jailbreaks actually use this method on the real jailbreak then I have the device tree which I can upload the RAM disk which I can upload and even IDs in here and I can mess with these these are the unique device ID and of course the uh, unique cheap ID. So a lot of stuff that I can uh, that I can mess with before creating the device. Once I'm happy with that, I press create device and that's 
it. In 10 minutes, I will have a new device created in here and I'm ready to test whatever I want on it. So naturally, I have created a few devices in here. One of them runs iOS 11.3.1. The iOS 11.3.1 is the target of the Electra jailbreak for the moment. And by the way, the Electra team utilized a lot the Corellium during their jailbreak development. So you can see already the Corellium platform being used in jailbreak. So then I have iOS 12. And what's the thing in here? I have iOS 12 in here and it's already jailbroken. Once you create a device and connect to it, it looks like this. It has a console where everything that happens is being presented. You can connect it to the display and actually see what's going on on the device. Of course, the uh, Apple logo is actually customized with the Corellium logo. And if you double press or press on the home button in here, it will activate the device and it will let you pretty much swipe through the applications and use the applications and so on. But that's not all it can do. You also have access to SciCrypt or Script by Soric, where you can actually interfere with processes and do, you know, tweak development on demand on a device and so on. And aside from that, you also have these. Now, this is where the real game changer begins. You're able to connect via SSH with the, um, the credentials in here to this jailbroken iOS 12 device. Now imagine how good is this since we're talking about a jailbroken device on iOS 12. After I connect to the VPN, which has to be um, configured with their TBLK file in here, I can communicate with that virtual device you see here on the screen by just connecting to it. So let's SSH into it just like on a normal jailbroken device and access the files. So I paste this and it will ask me for the key. I say yes. And then the password, I say Alpine. And if you take a look in here, we're in. I can see the into the root. And if I do LS, you can see all the files. Let's see the into the applications. So applications and LS, and you can see all the applications of the phone. So you can definitely see the importance of this. I am able to run commands just like on a normal jailbroken device, and that's pretty nice. Let's run the uname-a, and you can see that this is the kernel version of the iOS 12, and I am able to run these commands in here. So this is very, very good, because it helps a lot the development. Of course, if I want to, I can also do kernel-level debugging, which is something that you know, if you're very experienced in the domain, probably you need to do, and it hasn't been possible for a very long time since like, I don't know, iPhone 4 or something, because you need pretty hefty exploits for that, and you need to mess with, you know, KDP and stuff like that. So yeah, this is pretty much it about Corellium. I have really, really high hopes for this tool, because it is very important for the jailbreak development, and it helps a lot in testing and developing and exploit research and vulnerability research and so on. So thank you for watching guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I really hope this will help a lot in the future, the jailbreaks and jailbreakers will have the opportunity to no longer need physical devices in order to have, you know, support for a specific device in their jailbreaks. But till then, I'm Gio Snow. Peace out.